Well, this one's going to be a rant. And if you are one of those people who feels that I am overly negative um, sometimes, particularly when it comes to Doctor Who, maybe just don't watch this one. Because I'm not mad. I'm real disappointed right now. Now, before I get into any of this, it is possible, as with many things, that my concerns, as firmly as they have settled in, may prove to not go the way that I expect them to. I'm going to talk about the direction and a number of specific things in regards to Doctor Who and how Russell T. Davies appears to be approaching it. It is possible that I am misinterpreting how he is approaching it. I don't think I am, but it is possible. And I will continue to watch it looking for that possibility, but not expecting it. Because that that's the thing. I'm... I'm giving up a lot of expectations. I'm giving up, well, hope. Not all hope. I'm not giving up hope that Doctor Who will be good. I'm sure it'll still be good. But at this point, I need to give up a very specific hope that I have been holding on to since Russell T. Davis was announced to be returning as the showrunner. And that hope was that the Russell T. Davis running the show now would not be the same Russell T. Davis as who was running the show starting in 2005. What I did not want was what felt like an attempt to recapture old glories and to approach the show like he'd never left. I know there are other people who do, did, or still want that. I recognize they exist. I am not one of them. I've seen some of the stuff he's done since. I saw It's a Sin. I haven't gotten to years and years yet because it honestly sounds pretty heavy and depressing, but I've seen some great write-ups on it, some great analysis. It seems fascinating. I wanted the Russell T. Davies who's been making that to do Doctor Who. But there have been an increasing number of signs that we were just going to get back the Russell T. Davis who was making the show before. I know this might sound all weird, but I, I, there felt like there was a maturity to some of the work that he's done, and this just goes right back to what he was doing before. And I've been getting nerves, well, just from his initial announcement, and then when he brought in his old uh, producing partners, and then bringing in... Uh, David Tennant and Catherine Tate to come back temporarily. Yes, but that felt like one more thing, like we're just trying to recapture the past. And then Murray Gold was brought back to do the music again. And and now he's reintroduced his mystery box style format and storytelling. And I'm not going to reiterate all my problems with mystery box style storytelling and Doctor Who specifically. I spent over half an hour on the main channel talking about that. There's a link to a video. You can check that out. But I said in my review for The Church on Ruby Road that it was my hope that the old woman at the end, that's Mrs. Flood, as well as the whole thing about Ruby's parents, would not become major things that were going to eat up time going forward. That was a hope that even at the time I expressed it, I said, uh, I, there's a good chance this is going to be a thing. I just hope it isn't. Well, it is in both cases. RTD himself has confirmed that. This is Flood is a mysterious character. You will eventually find out more about it. She's a slow burn, Mrs. Flood. And he has indicated that Ruby's parentage is specifically being set up as a mystery. That's going to be a tremendous spine to the series. Who's the mother? Who's the father? Why was she abandoned? How was she left there? Huge plots to come about this. Now, again, this is not surprising, but it is disappointing. It's the return of one more thing. The storytelling format that 
I was tired of by the time he left. And again, you can check out my previous video. He is not the only showrunner to employ the mystery box tactic. Just to be clear of what I'm talking about, I'm not talking about any sense of mystery. I'm talking about the very specific storytelling format in serialized um, or semi-serialized television where something gets planted, brought up, or reiterated across multiple things, and the audience has no chance of actually finding out what that is beyond just wild theory um, building, theory crafting, and they will only find out what it is at the end. It is something that has no meaning whatsoever, but keeps showing up until it is revealed. J.J. Uh, Abrams does this kind of thing a lot, but to stick within the realm of Doctor Who, Bad Wolf is a mystery box. Um, Mr. Saxon is a mystery box. The Cracks in Time are a mystery box. The Hybrid is a mystery box. The Timeless Child's a mystery box. Some of these have been handled better than others. I would say that the Missing Planets from Season 4 was one of the more subtle plantings of one. Uh, actually, possibly the most subtle. And I would say that the Cracks in Time was one of the better uh, executed insofar as the things did at least do something even before the reveal of what the heck they were and what was going on. But by and large, this format, even when it's done right, I'm real tired of it. I'm real, real, real sick of it. It is not the only way to build long-term storytelling. It's not even the only way to build a mystery. It's just something I'm really tired of. And Russell seems to be diving right back into it. We have from the previous specials, the David Tennant specials, a reference from The Meep about the boss. And then there is a reference from The Toymaker about the one who waits. Those might be the same person. I'm assuming that they are, but we don't know. So we're planting some malevolent entity. And now we have a mystery surrounding... Ruby's parentage and a mystery surrounding Mrs. Flood. And I don't really care what the answers are, and I'm not going to speculate. Um, I've said before that I'm not good at speculation anyways, but like I've seen people go off on some wild tangents with these things. I'm seeing an increased number of people thinking that they're going to pull a, a Dave Lister from Red Dwarf with uh with Ruby Sunday and have her basically be her own parent somehow like maybe it's a clone thing maybe it's a time thing who knows a lot of people are throwing River Song into the mix especially with Mrs. Flood because you know Melody Pond River Song Mrs. Flood there's a water thing going on I mean yeah sure it's possible granted that was a Moffat character who was signed off and had a finished story, but yeah, sure, why not? Surprised nobody's actually brought up the fact that we actually had a villain called The Flood. Granted, it was a weird zombie water thing, so that doesn't really fit, but surprised I haven't seen too much of that. And of course, there's people speculating about the Ronnie, because they always speculate about the Ronnie. Oh, right, and that's the other thing, the freaking hand picking up the, the tooth of the master... This does not excite me. You're better than this, RTD. You are better than this. You do not need to use these cheap hooks to keep us coming back. This was a tactic that I understand why you adopted it. I would have liked you to have dropped it. You didn't really. You kind of used it to varying degrees every time. And Moffat carried the torch. For it as well, and Chibnall picked it up in his own way. As I said, this this whole thing does not preclude the shows, the episodes, the season, the era from being good. They might be good. They might be great. Heck, I liked the 60th anniversary specials for the most part. I liked Why Blue Yonder and the Giggle a fair bit better than I liked the Star Beast, but I did like all three. But I kind of gave them a pass for feeling very familiar because, okay, well, you brought Tennant back. And you're doing this nostalgic thing with him, but it'll start to feel different when we get to Judy Gautua, right? 
Cause like I accepted with the tenant specials, like here's, here's the, um, you know, the kind of, the kind of campy thing, you know, the, 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 the warm feels that we get with, with the star beast. And then we do the weirder stuff that, you know, doctor who can do, you know, stuff kind of like midnight or blink or whatever, or, you know, it's like more out there stuff. And, and, and then we do the, the big, um, finale that's heavy on emotions and a little light on, uh, on story logistics. It was all very familiar. It was familiar in a way I was willing to indulge in on the assumption that we would get to Shudigatwa and not just keep doing stuff we've already done. But with the very clear inclusion of Mrs. Flood and now the parents of Ruby Sunday being something that's being planted and intends to pay off. Although I'm not necessarily sure. Like this is something I think a new generation of Doctor Who fans need to learn. Sometimes RTD will build up stuff bigger than it is actually going to be. Like I wouldn't be super shocked if what ends up happening with Mrs. Flood is that we're just going to end up seeing her in the, the whatever episode the set in the 60s with the Beatles and it'll just turn out she's she recognized the doctor and or the TARDIS. And that's all that it is. Um, but Ruby's parents thing, that's that is almost definitely going to be something of size. And Mrs. Flood might be, too. It's just if one of them is going to end up being kind of a much smaller thing, that's the one I'm expecting. But this style of storytelling, this. Hey, don't you want to find out? Hey, don't you want to find out? I mean, the, g- crying out loud in the behind the scenes, Russell literally said, Who is Mrs. Flood? Come back and find out. I was gonna come back anyway. I don't need these cheap tricks. I don't need these hooks. It, it, it brings to mind how token... Most of the cliffhangers from the classic era of Doctor Who are. A lot of them are real silly and aren't interesting and don't move the story forward. But there's a cliffhanger at the end of every episode. So they do it regardless because that's the format and that's what they do. Even when it doesn't help and it doesn't enhance the story. And they don't know how to do anything interesting with them anymore. Every now and then I'll come across a, a cliffhanger in a classic episode of Doctor Who and go, okay, that one works. And there are some in there, but it's like one out of six, maybe at best. But they're always there. And that's kind of how this is starting to feel. All this stuff coming back, these format similarities, the cr- the crew all being reassembled, it, it's not feeling like, hey, let's get the old band back together. It's feeling like we don't know how to do a new thing. And I know other people will be happy about this. Other people genuinely wanted him to come in and make it feel like 2005 through 2009 again. I get that's what some people wanted. I'm sure those people are very happy. And I'm sure people who are much more into speculation and theorizing than I am are also very happy. This isn't what got me excited. I got excited for the hope of what a more mature, more refined, a writer with a newer set of experiences, newer outlooks, newer points of view would bring to the show. And at this point, I really just need to give up the hope that I'm going to get that. I might. I'd like to think that if that happens, I'm not so jaded that I will reject it out of spite. I mean, I'm fully capable of saying when something I didn't think would work does. That actually was largely the case with the 60th anniversary specials. I said long before it happened, bringing back any old doctor uh, to play the part again is a terrible idea. The show should never, ever do it. And it did. And I ended up mostly liking it. That's worked in reverse too. 
Series 11, Chris Chibnall's first era showrunner, he actually did a lot of stuff that I said the show should do. And I didn't like it because of the way he did it. Things that I think are good ideas can still be done badly. Things that I think are bad ideas can be done in ways that I can't imagine and made to work because I couldn't picture the version of that that worked. That is all fully possible, and that would be amazing. But I can't bring myself to expect that at this point. I, I'm going to approach Doctor Who just hoping to have fun. And I expect for the most part I will. But I'm probably going to be going through the next little chunk of time between now and when we eventually start getting uh, the proper episodes of the new season. Just coming to terms with the fact that RTD is not going to do anything new. Not really. And again, some people might say like, well, what the hell did you expect? The show to just stop being Doctor Who? Like, Well, no, but let me put it this way. Moffat's era is very Doctor Who. It feels distinctly different from RTD's first era. Chibnall, it's still Doctor Who. It has a very different feel from Moffat and from RTD. It's still Doctor Who. A lot of it I don't like, but it is still Doctor Who. And what I wanted was for RTD to come in and bring in a new era that would still be Doctor Who, the way his first era was, the way Moffat's was, the way, well, not ideally not quite the way Chibnall's was, but the way that that had its own identity. I wanted this to have its own identity too. And to have that identity be distinct from RTD's original time. And I think I need to let that go. Because as much as I have enjoyed as much as I was able to allow myself to enjoy, say, the 60th anniversary, I did that on the predicate assumption that we'd get something different or newer after that. And I need to let that go. Because if I keep clinging on to that, then when we get to these to the new episodes proper, I might end up legitimately angry, and I don't want to. Especially since this is a matter of something not failing at what it's intending to do, but just failing to be what I wanted it to be. And while you can, you know, make points about lost potential or what have you, that's ultimately not the most valid form of criticism out there. You kind of have to deal with what a thing is. And again, if you think it missed opportunities or um, it would have made more sense for it to take a different shape. You can point that out, but that shouldn't be the sole reason you dislike something. And so I need to let go of what I hoped this era would be. And I'd like to think that the upshot of that is that I will end, I will end up being able to enjoy what I get more than I would if I kept on clinging to this hope. However, the downside of that is I am going to be less excited. I'll st I'm still looking forward to new episodes. I, I want to see more of Shudi Gatwa. I really like him. But I'm not, I'm not excited. I'm not thrilled at possibility anymore. Because I feel like... I feel like the confirmation is that we just... It's just more mystery boxes again. Okay. Just... I should just stop expecting... <laughs> something different. It's just going to be what it was before. It'll be fun. It'll be good. But I can't get as excited about the same old thing. I, ju I just can't. Um, it's funny. When I first realized I was going to have to do this, you know, I say have to. I'm putting this out to cleanse it out of my own head so I can start the process of coming to terms with this and be in a better place when we start getting more episodes again, but I, I remember thinking, oh, I'm going to have to go off on this. And I think in my head, I actually thought I was going to be angrier, shouty a little, even. The frustration was going to cause my voice to raise. And it really didn't, because 
like I said at the start, I'm not mad, but I am disappointed. Doctor Who, the directions that RTD appears to be taking things. What are your thoughts on this? I suppose, first of all, do you think I have an inaccurate read on what it is he's doing? And if you don't think that's the case, I mean, am I the only one who had hoped for something different? It's possible. Maybe I'm the only one who had this expectation. But whatever your thoughts are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Patreon pays the video. Pays the video. <laughs> Pays my bills <laughs> and enables me to do stuff like this video. Oh, I should go to bed. Even if you can't help me out that way, like, share, subscribe. They all are of great assistance, but don't worry too much about that. What I really want you to remember is that you are beautiful, you are valid, and you are loved. And that is the wrong sign out. That is the one for the main channel. Yeah, I really do need to go to bed. This is the break room. We try and take a relaxed attitude around here, which I actually think I managed to do this time. So just come on back next time you need a break. Time for me to thank my highest supporting patrons. Robin Moore, Zubin Lafula, Goddess Elida, Oliver B, Tarak, the thing that goes going in the anime, Ruth, Goes with the Gazarian, Solitary Pictures, Ulrich Bogdan, Geek Filter, Melinda Walters, Toku BL Hubian, Jen, Auntie Kate 808, Becky Sparks, Renabi Likes the Poodle, Robin Powell, T Love, Tracy Scrabbit, Angry Casperl, Dave Hall, Quite Bearish, Rosalind Bennett, Pal Barabajagal, I'm sorry for whatever butchery I did to that, and Mira G. I know I've kind of done like funky stuff saying them the last few times. I had this whole idea where I was going to like sing them to the tune of Carol of the Bells, but then I realized it's going to like clash with my outro music and I didn't really want to pre-work that or just cut the outro music out altogether. That felt weird, so I just I just didn't I just didn't I just didn't do a thing this time. But now I've told you that I didn't do a thing. So I've made a thing about there being no thing. Okay. Thanks for sticking around. Bye.